All right, so to power new technologies like, say, a massive fleet of self-driving Teslas, the world's biggest economies will soon be craving the next generation when it comes to wireless networks. It is 5G I'm talking about, and right now, China. China is racing way ahead uh, of the United States when it comes to 5G. State-owned China Tower made its IPO Wednesday in Hong Kong. It's the biggest stock listing the world has seen in the past two years. China Tower is rapidly rolling out 5G across the country. It now has 350,000 5G cell towers. The U.S., by the way, just by comparison, uh, has a measly 30,000. A study out this week by Deloitte says that China could actually be creating a 5G tsunami, and soon the U.S. might never actually be able to catch up. Uh, here's why that is so significant. Self-driving cars, smart cities, fully connected homes, robots. This is the future, and it will be powered by 5G. The G stands for generation, as in next generation wireless network, and it's going to be fast. About 10 times faster than the 4G network on your phone right now. Today, it takes about six minutes to download a 3D movie on 4G. With 5G, it'll be 30 seconds. But 5G is about more than just super fast downloads and fewer drop calls. It's really about connecting the Internet of Things. All those sensors, thermostats, cars, robots. Right now, 4G just doesn't have the bandwidth for all those devices. But 5G will. That's why it's a game changer. Imagine self-driving cars instantly communicating with traffic lights and other cars. Or a surgeon with VR equipment and special gloves operating remotely on a patient thousands of miles away. 5G will make that possible. But when? 2020 is the working date for most of the wireless industry. Four nationwide carriers are already testing the technology. Chipmakers are building processors and radios for 5G communication, and network equipment companies are building the backbone. But the future won't come cheap. 5G signals are powerful, but they don't reach as far. Making it work will require thousands, maybe even millions of mini cell phone towers pretty much everywhere you can imagine. Every lamppost, the side of every building, maybe even in every room of your home. That's why rolling out 5G to the entire United States could cost $300 billion. That is no small change. Uh, Daniel Ives is... Chief Strategy Officer and Head of Technology Research at GBH Insights. Daniel, thank you so much for being with us. So when you compare the U.S. to China, China racing ahead when it comes to 5G, why is the U.S. lacking behind? And look, it also speaks to the Qualcomm Broadcom situation in terms of the national security threat that was deemed within the Beltway. Look, I think part of it is that this is a, obviously a two-horse race, U.S. and China. I, I think right now, you know, China is definitely ahead, but I do believe this is something where from a technology and R&D perspective, they've had an advantage. But this is something over the coming years, it's going to be key for the U.S. to really significantly double down on 5G development, and especially domestically in terms of the infrastructure build out. Because, you know, as that piece talked about, there's massive ramifications across really all of technology and the consumer ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And I think this is something that, from a, from a U.S. tech perspective, it's going to become more and more uh, key over the coming, called 6 to 12 months. So I just want to make sure that our international audience really understands the difference between 5G and 4G, just in terms of how society would be different. Obviously, 5G is a lot faster than 4G. We know that. I believe it's, what, 10 times faster, yeah. if, not, if not more. Um, but when it comes to our ordinary lives, how would 5G really make everybody's life that much better or different, especially when it comes to things like, I mean, that piece talked about self-driving cars, it talked about the Internet of Things. What changes? Well, I think it's really more an interconnected world. I mean, you see in the smart homes, and you see with Amazon, Google, you know, Apple, as well as others, really getting into the smart home, interconnected. More and more, consumers are going to become interconnected from a smart home to the automobile, to what's happening at work, at home, and 5G is really infrastructure broadly, because there's chips, telco, software that's going to all be around 5G. But think about it, it's going to make things go a lot quicker, and the capacity of what consumers and enterprises are going to basically have at their uh, table are going to be significantly more than they are today. Okay, so that's what I'm interested in. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in what sort of new type of apps, what sort of new businesses can really thrive from a 5G platform? Obviously, as we move towards 5G, I assume that you're going to see an explosion in different types of businesses and apps that are going to take advantage 
What type should we be looking out for? Well, and also OTT. I mean, you, you know, if you think about just broadly defined streaming and what's going on, obviously Netflix has been at the top of the heap. But look at what Disney's done with the Fox acquisition. Look at what's happening across media across the world. You're going to see more and more streaming apps. And the ecosystem today, if you look at 5G and you look at some of the private companies, over the next three to five years, 5G from an investment perspective, from a VC to private equity, mm -hmm. is going to be along with cybersecurity, probably one of the biggest areas that you're going to see investment dollars in. So I believe 5G, we're really in the early first inning of this playing out. And even though AT&T and Verizon and a lot of others are sort of front and center here in terms of building that out, I think right now it's about U.S. versus China. Who are the winners? Who are the companies that win from this? Oh, yeah. That's